Welcome back to the Bernard Lee Poker Show. So fortunate to be talking with the 2018 Poker Hall of Fame inductee, also president of Poker Go, Maury Eskandani. So, Maury, we were talking previously about all the shows that you have created. And recently, you were named president of Poker Go. And I want to talk about what you see the future of Poker Go is. But before we do that, there has been renewed interest in the last several months of a lot of shows on Poker Go. I think a lot of it has to do, obviously, with the pandemic and everyone's all pent up and haven't been able to play. And so they're excited to watch anyone play. But then adding together that you have some of the biggest names in poker, whether playing heads up battles or whether it is playing um, in high stakes poker. Let's talk a little bit first about the heads up battles that have been happening recently, such as Daniel, Doug Polk, Daniel, Phil Helmuth. What's the excitement behind that? Obviously the big names, that's, that's a given, but what is that excitement and, and how different is it to tape a heads up battle as opposed to, you know, nine players around the table? Is, is, is there a lot of difference behind your, your uh, editing and, and production? Well, heads up is obviously much easier to produce and edit. You know, you're not, you're talking two players versus, you know, tournaments right. of uh, a thousand players. Camera set up so, and you know who you're pointing them at. <laughs> um, I, I realized, you know, like uh, the, the first big heads up event was NBC's heads up championship that we right, did for right. uh, eight or nine season. I, I can't remember. It was really well received and, and it did wonderful. Uh, ratings in, in, in NBC and and a, a lot of people. I remember getting having the most heartache when uh, we were getting ready to uh, do those events in March, and I would start getting emails and calls and uh, uh, threats and uh, everything else <laughs> starting last, you know, December before. And that uh, yeah, you got to get me in, right? I'm playing, right? I'm gonna. Yeah, be yeah, 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 so yeah. It was very popular. I think Hits Up is just uh, um, a fun structure especially that you know nbc says that was just like the brackets that we're coming into right now in march madness right. and uh you know it's exciting to watch uh one-on-one -on -one, uh, duels and you know single elimination you lose you're gone and and you right know, move forward so that part of it is exciting on, on any kind of sports so it doesn't have to be just it's not just for poker uh in recent heads ups uh the one that you saw with Doc Polk and Daniel Negrano, that was brewing before, uh, you know, that, that's been brewing because, sure. guys, uh, you know, like they were getting, getting on each other's nerves, whether it's a social media or whatever, you know, um, that came about after we did a show called High Stakes Duel. The concept for High Stakes Duel was that you could beat someone, but you couldn't go home with the money if there was a challenger. Yeah. So that was new. Now you could come and play. Bernard can play Maury. And if Bernard wins uh, and somebody knocks on his door and says, hey, buddy, I'm challenging you, you had to play. You couldn't yeah. go anywhere. So uh, obviously, like with the stakes doubling up every time, it could get really exciting. And we right. knew, uh, you know, like the, in today's world of poker, there's always going to be a challenger. There's always somebody you see there, whether it's been, you know, finding a backer that uh, uh, thinks he's got the advantage to play the champion. Uh, the challenge is going to go on. Of course, the first high stakes duel, Phil Helmuth just happened to beat Antonio three times in a row. Right. And we have ways of ending the duel. One of the ways that he can end the duel is win three in a row before match five. Mm -hmm. After that, if you win two in a row, you're, you can still walk. So right. otherwise, you know, it can get ridiculous, but the wall, it can happen. It is possible for one player win and then the other one, then the other one. I mean, and if this thing gets to round uh, 10, for example, uh, now we have like 12.8 uh, million on the line. Right. You know, right. Right. Who's right. going to challenge you then? Right. And again, you know, 
somebody could come by. We could see a 25 million plus, uh, you know, uh, fight. So right. the idea of high stakes duel again was uh, just an ongoing competition between two poker players. They didn't have to be the greatest in the world. It could be just somebody just walked in and say, you know, I'm the hired gun. Let's go. Right, let's, right, right, right. Let's get this duel going. So right. that was, and then you're seeing all these other uh, feuds, we call them, come up right. organically. That's got nothing to do with us. That's sure, that's, sure. You know, like, uh, and of course, then you're, you're just providing them the house and the outlet to do it in, right? Right. <laughs> right. Duels, but I wanted to go back to the NBC heads up, like you said, the, the excitement behind that is very similar to like the March Madness for, for college basketball. It's one and done, right? I, I know the, the, the uh, finals was two out of three, but it was one and done. So you could have these upsets, these Cinderella stories, and, and maybe it's apropos because it was Shannon Elizabeth one year who went all the way to the final four. Uh, you know, I mean, and, and it was just such a Cinderella run for her. Um, and, you know, th that's what was created the story. Always people thought, oh, I, I might be able to do that. And uh, I remember one year, I think, um, I, I forgot if it, I think it might have been the last year or, or they were you weren't doing it that year. So on ESPN, I did a mock draft and then I like just picked out people and then we created it all the way down and we had a lot of fun with it. So it was definitely something NBC heads up was so great. Um, uh, the other thing that's ex shown a lot of excitement over the last um, uh, early part of this year was high stakes poker. Now, uh, you know, this was something that was, you know, loved to be watched. Uh, everyone who is, is a fanatic and an aficionado of high stakes poker always remembers um, the, the huge hand between Gus and Daniel, um, these two guys flopping it and then quads. I mean, both flopping about then. I mean, just crazy that it all comes down that way. Um, and now uh, someone who really burst onto the scene probably about a decade ago, kind of went over to Macau, didn't really hear much of him, but now Tom Dwan is back and, 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 and being seen. How has high stakes poker been received um, from your side, obviously from the poker world, because everyone's so excited to see anything on poker, uh, especially after the pandemic. But how has it been received for, from your side? Well, we, we knew high stakes poker is going to be well received, but we even, you know, our group and our team didn't, uh, you know, expect to get this kind of a excitement from yeah. uh, the old show. Uh, it's almost like the pandemic was a good thing, right? Because of this yeah, specific, yeah. right? Oh, it really helped out. <laughs> it just stepped one, you know, I got to take one step back because it's not, you know, we started out how this whole poker television business came into my life. But I just, I also have to say, you know, it started with Henry Ornstein uh, in 1995, believe it or not. Although we went on TV 2003, but 1995 is when we were putting poker table together with whole cans and, and discussing ideas, you know, what we could do for poker. And come, you know, fast forward 2015, uh, another younger Henry Ornstein that has just as much or maybe more passion for uh, poker, specifically Nolan and Hold'em and tournaments, that really put his money where his mouth was, is Carrie Katz. I mean, yeah. he, came, he was like the second, uh, he, 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 again, in my life, I'm saying I'm always surrounded with the right people. Uh, you know, Henry, Henry's obviously, he's, you know, he's, he, he was done with poker. He, he, he didn't want to continue. It was a lot of work. He was pretty much retired and he didn't need, you know, so this is a young man's game, take it and run with it, you know, good luck. And uh, that was, you know, it was done in 2004 or five. To, like he did, he did the uh, uh, super, uh, Poker Superstars and we did a couple of other shows together like uh, 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 High Stakes Poker actually started, you know, we doing it with Henry for the first two or three years. Then comes Carrie Katz that was just all in with every sense of the world where we went from a production company that uh, was building stages, trying to find a venue and put it in different uh, casinos and then go and knock on networks, uh, you know, hey, would you take this show? Would you take that show? He made this all one-stop shopping center. Right. You don't have to do that anymore. So we are now a company that has a place 
films it, and we are our own network. So we are a production company that's producing shows for our own network. That, I mean, all of a sudden, yeah, just get as creative as you want to be because sky's the limit now. Right. That's right. why you see all of these new shows, new majors with the uh, super high rollable poker matches, US Poker Open, the old shows like High Stakes Poker, Poker After Dark Rejuvenated. All of them are just back on the burner again and going full blast. And two more exciting shows that's going to be introduced uh, very soon. And I think that's going to grab people. I mean, yeah. these, are, these are all because of one man having so much passion for the game and so much faith in the industry and the poker you know, that, that's willing to say, okay, let's just give it all we have and make it work. Um, yeah, Carrie should get a lot of credit for this. And I want to yeah. give it to him. He's, uh, uh, I mean, he's soon become not just someone that was uh, instrumental putting Poker Central and Poker Go and a studio and everything else together. He's also become a trusted friend. So we can right. you know, like discuss things and uh, move the ship forward. Me being introduced as president of Poker Go, it, it really didn't change anything. I mean, right. I'm, I am not, I'm not leading any groups that I'm not, you know. You don't like, have a crown and a scepter or no, anything like that? It, 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 <laughs> I mean, I, mean, <laughs> I see my role mainly giving support than giving, you know, like obviously when it comes to producing the shows and all that, I still bring a lot of experience into play. But if it becomes, you know, when we are talking about marketing or we talking about, uh, you know, uh, how to make the social work or uh, many of the other aspects of a network, uh, I, was, I was not exactly in a network. I was producing and supplying shows for a network. That part of it is many, many part of it is new to me. So um, uh, I enjoy learning. I really do. I mean, you would be surprised how many files is in my desktop right now. They're just trying to figure out what these abbreviations mean. Never mind anything else. Like, uh, you know, and, and this is this become another new world and another, you know, uh, um, a learning experience for me, which I enjoy. Uh, to me, I mean, my role as, as the president of this company is to uh, just make sure that all the wonderful creators that we have do what, what, get what they need to uh, get us, you know, to another chapter of, of this whole uh, poker world, right. poker TV world that we have in. So what do you see as kind of the future going down the road? You talk about these new shows, but what else? Is it more live, event, live events, more uh, exclusive content? What, what exactly, or all of the above? Live events is, is something that everybody always wants. Mm -hmm. But we have to be also, uh, you know, there's certain shows, live events is just not as attractive as edited events. So when we're doing... For example, Poker After Dark, High Stakes Poker, watching that whole day of eight hour live, it may be something you and I like to watch. Right, right, right. Take it out to the general public. Uh, I, I would say maybe 2% of them would prefer that over, you know, like, let's just see the exciting part of it and put the story together where I enjoy, you know, make make the six hour look like two or three hours. It, you know, right. that, that's what we do for all the, what I call the studio shows. Once we go into uh, uh, the majors and the tournaments, yes, live events will become something that people want to watch because you just wants to see, you know, like how your man is doing or who, who's, you know, like at what stage of the tournament, uh, <clears throat> how, <clears throat> how they got knocked out or whatever, you know, like those stories all become the, the heroes of the uh, tournament, you know, how's Daniel doing, how's Phil Ivey doing? Those are the conversation you want, you know, a lot of people want to know every minute of the tournament. But uh, when that goes from live stream into television, that gets edited too, because again, you're trying to uh, make the masses happy with the shows right. and get them absorb it. Um, the future of poker, just like future of any other sports out there, has, is quickly moving from linear Ooh. TV that we were all used to into digital world. And um, this is just tip of the iceberg. Anyone that thinks they know that where this is, you know, like how this is going to end up, uh, obviously doesn't know how fast the technology is changing. Right. So um, we are just trying to keep 
up with everything else that's that's moving with the speed of light and just bring poker along so you're going to find uh, uh you know a lot of uh, a lot of different distribution for poker shows and um in my opinion it's going to be nothing but positive i mean more and more people are going to know about texas hold'em know about the poker events know about poker in general and I'm not just for it won't benefit just World Series of Poker that you know Poker Poker Go does or uh, high stakes poker. It will benefit any other poker show that's out there. Sure, sure, absolutely. I I would be remiss to not talk about a very special moment in your career. It was actually notified to you on the set if you're watching on YouTube, literally right behind me. And if you actually look up right in that number, that's 2018. That's the year, exact year. So this, this, I took this, this is a picture I took of the mothership set of ESPN uh, and the World Series final table. So mm. I took this picture um, that year, one day when the, 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 the room was empty and it was announced that year at the World Series main event during the, um, one of the breaks Ali Najad, Nick Shulman brought you onto the set to kind of talk to you about all of the production and under the guise that they needed your expertise. But after a couple of minutes of them really just trying to continue to fool you and punk you, they announced that you, along with John Hennigan, were inducted into the 2018 Poker Hall of Fame. I've never really seen you get that choked up. And it was, uh, I remember watching it and just smiling from ear to ear, so happy as, as Ali said, Uncle Maury has made it. And we were, we, so many of us thought the exact same way. So thrilled. I remember texting you immediately saying, congratulations, so well-deserved. Uh, talk a little bit about that, that moment uh, that must be so memorable still. Well, look, obviously, it was a very, very special day of my life. There, no question about it. Um, I still have the trophy. I'm looking at it right now. Uh, <laughs> it, it's sitting here, you know, poke all the time. It's, it's so special. Um, all day that day, I knew something was up just because the way it was being geared. Yeah. Although I, I was like thinking 90% something like this is coming down, but you don't want to believe it. You know, right. if I tell you, like, you won the lottery, but it's going to be announced, you say, well, nobody wins the lottery. There's, you know, say, but, but I mean, no, you really did. And I'm thinking everyone is trying to hide something from me. That means, you know, there's something happening. And I could sense that right away. But just the way it was going forward, I wasn't 100% sure. And when you're going to be awarded, you know, something like that, even if you were 90% sure that 10%, when it happens, it's the whole world. Yeah, so yeah. it was, it was really special moment, mainly because you start your poker career as a professional poker player and you see people getting inducted in poker hall of fame. Like my days of uh, uh, playing poker, I saw Chip Reese, Jack Keller, Sarge, uh, Ferris, um, um, Doyle Brunson, uh, I, I think, yeah, yeah Doyle Brunson, um, Lyle Berman, uh, like Johnny Chan, Phil Hellmuth, like I saw these guys getting, and I kept thinking, you know, I'm a pretty tough grinder. I mean, I grind every day and, and you know, I, I do really well playing these games. I wish there, there, there was like some sort of a Hall of Fame presentation for just grinders, not people yeah. that done, you know, great in the tournaments and all that. Just every day they come and go and put their head down and, and grind and grind and grind. And I was thinking if someday, if I ever, like just an impossible, zero chance, but you can dream about it, you know, right. became, you know, inductee uh, and actually was inducted to Poker Hall of Fame. I am going to absolutely say I'm representing the grinders. It just so happened. It was completely like it came from every single direction. It yeah. wasn't it wasn't like just me being a grinder, but me being a television producer that got me there. Again, 
See what I was telling you again, being surrounded by something that I didn't <laughs> guess, you know, like nothing uh, ever happens in, in, in my life is by right. design. It just seems like I stumble over it. So um, this came about uh, for television production. I know Nick mentioned something about seven card stud because we played together and Larry Flint's game. And uh, he knew I've been playing stud forever and limit Holden forever. So he mentioned something. And I remember saying something about, you know, like, I don't know if I said it or not, actually, but I always thought about all those people that grind every day and make an honest living playing poker. Don't uh, abuse the dealers. Don't abuse the players. They just come in day in. And I still see them, Bernard, believe it or not. Once in a while, I go in the poker room. I see some of those guys from heck my frontier and uh caesar's palace of the old days they're still yeah. coming in every day and grinding right right the limits they're playing is not fluctuating between you know like uh tenfold they're right. still within the same limit that's making their living and they put people you know they put their kids in college or bought homes and everything else right. i have such an admiration for them that does i'm not taking away from all the big heroes and these are unknown names that right. people don't know and uh, the, it, it just, uh, they're special people. Let's just put it that way. Well, it's, it's funny because at the World Series of Poker, you know, when you play No Limit Hold'em, obviously the average age is like 29 years old. I mean, you know, everyone is so young. But when you play in a seven card stud bracelet event, uh, I'm 50 and I'm, I'm a youngin. I mean, the, the average age is well above that uh, because it's a, it definitely is an unusual game. You know, PLO, obviously, uh, horse, those kind of games have continued. But in seven card stud, high low, I don't I think is a little bit different. But seven stud is one of those games that it's really just that old school generation. I know people who have tried to learn it since and they go, I hate this game. And it's so funny because I'm like, I love this game. This is like what I grew up in. And I love this game. I actually enjoy Raz. You know, I, I mean, I, I enjoy these games. So it's very funny. And I know what you mean. Like I, 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 I play in the seven stud very often, uh, the 1500. And it really, you look around and you're like, wow, am I young? <laughs> so it is definitely uh, a different game uh, obviously to say the least um you know but but i will say i, I want to note this as well is, is that you know even just as a couple of years ago you won the 10k high roller at aria you won the short stack 10k uh for well in the six figures so let's not say that your poker prowess is completely gone you still have it uh, even though you are uh, behind the camera a lot, I, I did want to ask, because you watch so much behind the camera, do you pick up a trick or two that continues to improve your game, even in the limit scenario? I, I have to tell you that I just don't watch that much. I mean, it's been, you know, you're there so much seeing it, you're not going to watch another one. There's so many, so many talented producers that format the shows and watch every minute of it and put the hour together or put, you know, the, 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 the right uh, hands uh, string, string to uh, make, make the shows. I mean, those guys watch it and then after it's edited, they watch it again. After it's voiced, they watch it again. I get to watch a show right before it's going to uh, to the network. It's going to be delivered to the network. In high stakes poker, that's the only show that I actually, uh, just because Gabe and I are such good friends, we've yeah. always done it together. So he insists that I, I'll be there and do yeah, it. Yeah. Gabe so, Kaplan, of course, for Gabe people who, who know. Yeah. So, High stakes is really the, I, I still don't format it. I just go to the voiceover and voice it with Gabe. And I, I see the hands played before the air. Some of the, some of yeah. the shows, I get to watch it when you're watching it. Yeah. So, uh, the, and I, I got to tell you, yes, you can watch, uh, you know, a, a pro basketball player dunk the ball. Doesn't mean that just you saw him doing it. It's going to give you the ability to do it. In a way, it's true in poker too. You watch them pull some bluffs or you watch them make some laydowns. That doesn't mean you can do it. Right. What Paul laying down that second, you know, second nuts against Phil Hellmuth? I can never do that. It doesn't matter. Right. It just doesn't even if matter. even if even if Phil flips over his hand, you're like, that can't be real. I call. 
<laughs> That's a mirage. I call. <laughs> I mean, you really have to be, you know, dug into a different level so right. deep to, to right. sense those things. Right. I had it at some times. I mean, when I was playing poker. We all have those moments, but uh, yeah, yeah, it is. It I'm is. like in, in, in the course of a year, there'd be like a, 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 a couple of weeks that I was playing absolutely like God. If, you know, right. like, okay. And, but it didn't last all that long, you know? And so there, there are feelings that, that come from inner uh, players that just doesn't matter you watch it. It's not going to come. I mean, uh, Phil Ivey can show you the hand that he's playing a hundred times. And when you're playing with him 101st, you know, uh, hand 101 against Phil Ivey, even though you've seen the last hundred hand he's turned turn it up every, right. you're still going to doubt what, exactly. what, you know, like, so to me, just because you show your hands on TV doesn't expose the whole thing. Right. The only time would expose it if you're just an absolute net and <laughs> you only have one gear and right. you show it, okay, you know, this guy never, ever raises with ace jack. Okay, done. Right. I mean, okay. if you're that guy, yes, you're in trouble. But if you're that kind of play, no. I mean, so I watched. Have I learned some things? Um, yeah, I mean, I probably, I, I, I don't consider myself a Nolan and Holland player. And uh, I remember like one of them that I won, I had Kings and uh, Ali Ismerik has Queens. So yeah, if that, that happens, I beat him. Yeah. <laughs> boss children, who the boss <laughs> Those young but, guns, they don't know anything. Uh, but if, if things break even, I have no chance. <laughs> yeah, sure. It's, you know, like I can't fool myself. I enjoy, right. well, I enjoy playing, you know, like yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. going to be the fish that enjoys himself. <laughs> Maury, it has been an absolute pleasure uh, to kind of talk about, you know, we could do this for four or five more shows, but we really appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming on the show and, and talking about not only the old days of playing, but also today's world of Poker Go and the future direction. And, and we really appreciate everything that you have done for the poker world and all the shows and all the future shows that you will produce. So thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. It was my pleasure and I hope to see you on the links. I love it. I love it. Maury Eskandani here, 2018 Poker Hall of Famer and president of Poker Go. Hope you enjoyed this interview that we had here and stay tuned as we continue our interviews here as we have the 14th anniversary of the Bernard Lee Poker Show. And as always, may you always go in with the best hand and may you never get unlucky. Good night, everybody. <laughs>